Hello, I want to tell you something about geometry and joints. Suppose these are two legs here, the two cubes here, and this is the skeleton inside the two cubes, and we want to simulate a knee, for example. And then things can go dramatically wrong, and I'll show you how this uh, can be. So I just rotate this knee here, so it should only influence this leg here, and it uh, influences the neighboring le leg as well. So when I uh, rotate this one, it has an influence on the rest as well. So this is totally not working. We don't want this influence. We don't want an influence of this joint on this part of the geometry. We want to keep it and contain it there. And this is something about skinning and painting skin weights. So let's create a new scene now. And we start with the polygon modeling. We could use the surfaces from NURBS world as well. Uh, let's go to polygon modeling and create a cube. And we scale it up. And we move it up like this. So this is going to be our leg number one. Uh, when you go to polygon cube here in the attribute editor, you can change the subdivisions in the height and we need more geometry in order to get a nice deformation. Maybe like this. We don't need any subdivisions in width and depth because nothing will be deformed in this direction. So uh, let's control D, duplicate this leg and move it to the other side. Now the next thing is going to be creating this, the joints and there's a technique creating joints which you should follow and I think in 99% of all joint creations this is the way to go. You use the orthogonal windows, the ones here and not the perspective window. So uh, under rigging you find the skeleton here and under the skeleton you find things like here in the tab. It's basically the same. The command is create joints. Skeleton create joints. So um, when we click on this icon, uh, the cursor changes to a cross. And now we don't use the perspective window. We use this window now. And we place a hip bone like here, like in the middle. It's the hip. It's the center of the, it's the root of the skeleton, so to say. And then we create the top of the leg. And um, now we move to the side window. And in order to see what's going on inside of the leg, we use the wireframe view. So we see the window now, uh, the, the outline now in a wireframe mode. So this is going to be our knee. And this is going to be the foot and we press enter and we have placed the joint system into the I think it's the right leg. Now uh, we want the same thing for the left leg and uh, the way to do this is pretty simple. If you have only one hip that's why you duplicate only the uh, leg bone. So control D and you move it to the side and you see it keeps the hierarchy so we have one hip bone and two legs now. So the next step is going to be to bind the legs to that uh, joint system. Uh, I think the best way to proceed is to combine the two geometries, the two legs, into one mesh. Uh, currently there are two objects but it makes it much easier if you have you think of the whole geometry as a body if you had modeled the feet and and the breast and the chest and the head it would be you would combine all the separate objects into one so I select both of them the geometry only not the bones not the joints and I go to modeling and mesh and combine just to repeat this, 
you need the modeling menu set here. You go to mesh and you combine the two selected geometries. So they're one now. When I select this one, the other one is selected too, because in, in, in for Maya it's one geometry now. Now with this single geometry, the two legs in one object, in one mesh, uh, selected, I shift select the join system. And now I go back to rigging. And under skin, you find bind skin. That's the major command. That's why it's at the top of this menu set. You bind skeleton to a skin. So let's bind the skin now. Uh, what has changed is the color of the uh, mesh and the color of the joints here uh, because we have influences now on different parts of the geometry. When we select this uh, a joint for example the knee joint of the left knee and we rotate it like this it behaves perfectly especially interesting is that the rotation of this knee has no effect at all on the other knee and it's the same here when I rotate this it has no effect on this knee and that's how it's supposed to be I want to show you a command which is called go to bind pose. It's a lovely command which is very handy as it's been in Maya since many versions ago. So when we go to bind mode we back to where we came from. We still have the bound skeleton. All right everything is fine but um, we, we uh, can experiment with rotations and then always go back to the bind mode. So everything works all right with these two legs maybe it should not uh, influence that hip here so much but I'd show you in a second how this comes about you see it does a little bit of deformation here which I think in the actual world in the actual body um, happens too but uh, I show you how this comes about and we'll mess up this skeleton now so we select the skin and go to skin and paint skin weights. We use the option box because it opens the tool settings. And now you see something very interesting. White means strong influence, black means no influence at all. And this section up here is not totally black, it's a little bit gray. It's gray, and that means when I do something with this joint here, this is being influenced a little bit. This part very strongly of course and uh, this part very strongly too because I don't want the skin to stay there when the knee is being rotated to the back. And you see that there's no influence whatsoever on the right leg. So when I do a manipulation on this joint uh, only uh, this part is really dramatically affected which is just fine and here the influence fades and fades and fades it's still a little bit existent there but nothing there if I had placed the two legs closer to each other uh, during modeling and before skinning this would be different because this joint would not know if uh, it had to influence this uh, skin part of the skin as well. But we can do this, which doesn't make sense here because everything is fine with our skeleton. Uh, but I show you how to do this. You see this um, circle here, it is the size of my brush. When I press and hold the key B, B for brush, and move the mouse with the left mouse button, click to the left or right, I can increase or decrease the uh, size of the brush. So let's make it pretty small for now for this experiment and here uh, I have the joint selection. For example this is the bottom joint of the right leg. It has very little influence but a little bit of influence here. 
this doesn't matter because I'm not going to manipulate it anyway. We don't have a foot here to work on. But this is the um, knee joint, which has the same influence uh, on this leg as uh, this joint had on the other leg. So this is perfect as well. Be prepared, I'm going to mess up the skinning now. So um, I have this bottom right, basically the ankle selected. And I paint here and nothing happens. I need to set the value to one. I think the default is one anyway. Uh, it means that I'm painting positive values now. I'm painting white basically. So I have this selected in this hierarchy here and that's all I'm doing now. I just painted an influence up here. So now when I close this window and I do something with this joint here, I get a manipulation on the left leg as well. That's what I just painted in. And that's obviously unwanted. So that's how you paint weights. Have fun with skeletons. Bye bye.